It was an electrifying floor routine that turned UCLA gymnast star Caitlin Ohashi into a viral sensation. I couldn't stop watching. Your energy is contagious. But behind that smile is a legacy of pain. It was more like, you don't look like a gymnast. You look like you swallowed a pig. You had coaches tell you that? is just disgusting. She was the victim of fat shaming. I couldn't accept myself. Caitlin scored better than Simone Biles. But while Biles went on to win four Olympic gold medals. Why isn't she going to the Olympics again? There was a time where I was on top of the world. I was unbeatable until I wasn't. Oh, that was horrible. I am now known as the coach of Caitlin Ohashi. I was in the fight for my life. I had so much hate in me, and I was trying to rebel and take it out on my new coaches here. Because I'm one of the most decorated coaches. I'm relentless, mean, basically. And I said to her, you get it? I am hired to win. One day, Caitlin looked me in the eye and said, I hate myself. Winners make adjustments and losers make excuses. I was told that it was embarrassing how big I had become. I was compared to a bird that couldn't fly. These are all things that when I was skinny, I was told, so what would they think of me when I had become big? I couldn't accept myself. Gymnastics was my worth, it was my life. I hated myself. It's a lot of pressure just because you can never escape it. So you go into the gym and you hear all about how big you look and then you go on social media and you hear from the people that are following you yeah. so you don't really ever escape it and then even when you look in the mirror because you've heard it so much you start believing it it was more like don't eat you look like an elephant you look like you swallowed a pig you You're... had coaches tell you that um yeah i did what? the athletic director calls me in her office and says we're going to make a change with our head coach and we would like for you to be the new head coach I don't know the first thing about gymnastics. I'm like, can I get any more? She goes, no, just go figure it out. How am I supposed to lead one of the premier programs in the country? I did what I thought was the very, very smart thing to do. In my mind, a coach was tough talking, relentless, snarky at times, no gray area, black and white, mean, basically. So I learned to say things like, winners make adjustments and losers make excuses. When I came out here, it was really hard because I had so much hate still left in me. And I was trying to like rebel and take it out on my new coaches here. Mm. And I will never forget a team meeting we had halfway through her freshman season. And Caitlin very clearly and unapologetically said, I just don't want to be great again. I felt like I got sucker punched. My first thought was, then why the heck am I going to honor your scholarship? One day, Caitlin looked me in the eye and said, Miss Val, I just want you to know, everything you tell me to do, I do the exact opposite. The year before, we had finished second by half of a tenth. The year I took over, we came in dead last. I realized at that time I was not cut out for this job. I'm walking through Ackerman Union on my way to resign, and I come across Coach Wooden's book on leadership. His book opened up magically to his definition of success. And it said, success is peace of mind in knowing you've done your best. Coach Wooden was hailed as the greatest coach that ever lived. I am a coach. I am hired to win. And I read his definition again and again and again. And when I read it, the word you got bigger and bolder. Success is peace of mind in knowing you have done your best. And I had the biggest aha moment of my life. I had been trying to be somebody else. And at that moment, I realized Whenever you try to be somebody else, you will always be a second-rate them. The worst part about it is it prevents you from being a first-rate you. I scrapped everything that I had done. I scrapped all those stupid coaching quips, and I just became me. When Caitlin came to UCLA, she was broken. 
in body, mind, and spirit. She had grown up in a stereotypical, very high-level athletic world, and she was damaged. She was like, when was the last time you have been happy in the sport? I was like, I honestly don't remember. It was probably when I was 11 years old before I ever turned elite. Caitlin didn't hate gymnastics. Caitlin hated everything associated with being great. Caitlin didn't want to be a winner because winning at all cost had cost her her joy. So I embarked on the painfully slow process of building trust and proving to her that first and foremost, I cared about her as a whole human being. What is that? Togetherness. This is what? Togetherness from the fibers of the trampoline. This is Bruin family, right? And what happens with Bruin family? We trust each other, right? It's about trust. It's about enthusiasm. It's about passion for everything we do. It's about the fact that we're all very unique and we all bring different things to this fiber, right? Part of my strategy was to only talk to Caitlin about gymnastics in the gym. Outside of the gym, we talked about everything else. School, boys, families, friends. Right. One thing that I've carried through in all of my coaching and teaching to help people feel good about what they are and who they are and feel great about the fact that they're not a stereotype and whoa that is so cool that you're so unique unique is so much more fun than status quo i start with i'm going to help you become the best person that you can be and i'm going to help you become a champion in life big 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 set aerial it took me finding Miss Val in UCLA and having a different goal and path to follow to finally find joy and love within the sport again. We finally had to go through and build this trust between each other because that's the first time I've ever felt a connection with a coach that strong. My mom wasn't exactly happy when I quit elite gymnastics and wanted to go to college. Miss Val asked her why she had like a change in her heart. And she said, I see how happy my daughter is. And that's all it took to, to feel like a person again. Leaving the sport, feeling untouched by it. At the end of the day, I think this should have been my path. I haven't been able to feel this type of happiness in a long time. I found my joy, my voice, myself, and my love for the sport. It's not the outcome, it's not me standing on a podium with medals, it's me being able to walk out with a smile on my face and truly being like happy with myself. And that's first.